Hello. We are talking uh, with uh, Oksana Vovchenko, and our topic today, my life in a world where no one has to work. How are you? Hello. Fine. Uh, I think that this topic will be fascinating for many people. It looks like a dream. What will be the world where we have no need to work? All our basic needs are covered. Uh, what mean we have decent shelter, food, clothes, uh, Medicare, and basic education, and we are not forced to work. What will be the world? What it will look like? Will we come to a sort of utopia? What means a more harmonized society, more happier society? Or will it be dystopia? Some unsuccessful way of organizing society. So what do you think? I, I must attest that uh, I have a lot of experience with not working uh, since uh, probably 1990. Let me add one more detail. I would like to consider this a question on absolute scale. So let us assume that this is not just one community. Say like Amishas, they live successfully, but in community which supplies them all around. But let's imagine that this is the entire humanity, not just one local small of community. Of course, but uh, all our experience comes from our personal experience. And uh, the most attested things we can say from our perspective, from our point of view. So that's why I would like to start with my personal experience. And since uh, that was the way how I organized and keep running my life until now, I addressed uh, I addressed this issue for many years as a social issue, as a uh, prediction that in the future that might be the new ways of life. And, uh, uh, but still, I would like to start with my personal experience and then to uh, extend it to, to the society as a whole. So uh, I hated to work because uh, it was making me sad, tired, I felt that my life is slipping away. I felt very uh, unhappy. And I felt that I'm just burning out my life for bare minimum that uh, it's not even enough to, to support myself. And it was one of the major problems as a youngster when I started my adult life very early. The first job I got was when I was 14. Uh, I was studying in a special uh, uh, medical school for uh, medical assistants to become uh, a candidate for the real med school later on. And I've uh, applied for a job uh, as a aide in the hospital where I had to uh, assist the patients, uh, clean all the dirty stuff, wash the floors. And uh, I remember those first experiences I had, how I was looking out of the window to the beautiful um, forest and I couldn't just go to this forest. I had to stay uh, in this uh, smell, uh, odors, uh, dirt, and uh, hopelessness. Uh, so th those were my first experiences of work. I always considered uh, such kind of work as uh, some sort of torture. Later on, when uh, I went on 
uh, with my spiritual experiences, I found the ways to treat this job differently as a spiritual journey, helping others, uh, making effort, being ascetic. And that's why uh, during this period of time, I enjoyed it a lot, helping others, driving long hours, people everywhere for free. Uh, uh, but when I, I became the male nurse, uh, I used to say, if I would do this job as my uh, I, uh, ideological uh, commitment, I would be happy to do it. But uh, doing it for money and, and very little money is not something that makes me happy. So pretty much that's... Uh, that's uh, where my journey started. And I was always advocated against. I was always advocating against uh, the, uh, the job, uh, which is coming with uh, such strains. And what I couldn't understand is that uh, I couldn't understand why other people just uh, putting up with that. They were absolutely fine doing this kind of life. And then I realized probably that uh, most of my fellow friends are just uh, living very, uh, very simple lives without much uh, aspirations to understand this uh, world and universe, to, to get deeper understanding and philosophy uh, ideas. And therefore, they didn't suffer. They didn't suffer. Even uh, quite to the opposite, when they were forced not to work, they would start drinking, doing stupid things, getting bored, and saying, when finally I'm going to work. Later on in my life, I found uh, same things uh, in my feelings when I was frustrated, when I was really uh, not ready to, uh, to be left alone with myself. I was looking for opportunities to work. But it was a specific kinds of works that I would uh, choose. Somehow, some why, when I'm left alone and I need to choose uh, any activity, I'm choosing driving and mostly driving. Uh, driving people around, driving... Uh, 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 I don't know why. The truth is, I was, I'm not a good driver. <laughs> but I know, you know, uh, all the time, people that are not good in something, they always try to do this particular thing, like accountants that don't know math, the doctors that don't have a compassion to their patients. Um, so I'm a bad driver, and probably that's why uh, it's safe to drive with me. I always fear the accidents, and I'm always extra cautious, extra, extra cautious, which irritates my other fellow drivers on the road, but that makes me, I think, safer uh, in my about 30 years career. I don't know why. I remember as a child, I was uh, playing like I'm a taxi driver. I was making some kind of the wheel at my desk and I was driving around somehow. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, that's what I'm doing when I'm frustrated. Well, um, I, that what, what makes me feel better. I'm just driving somewhere. Anyways, uh, 
some other people they choose other kind of works also it's very important why i'm driving because i feel free i feel freedom even if i am fulfilling some orders when i'm driving that's the highest point of my freedom i am uh, uh, driving a powerful vehicle that uh, takes me to the things and to places where i would like to go and i feel this feeling of freedom what i really hate about work if i'm enclosed in one cubicle or i have to come to the office and uh, uh, and things like that and many times uh, as a business owner i was trying to become normal i was setting up the offices but i never worked in those offices sometimes they were empty for for months and i was just paying the rent um sometimes i had some workers working there but i really really not able to to go to work in a um, uh, conventional way probably because my first uh, experiences as a young person maybe because my parents especially my mother was using work as a punishment was using it as something that uh, I didn't want to do and always was associated with punishment and uh, and aggression towards me uh, she, she always made us the kids to to clean the house and doing these kinds of works I have never been good in it and especially because uh, my uh, vision is impaired I'm not very good uh, I don't see the dirt. I realized, only today I realized that. Really, after like 45, 50 years. That's why I had this problem. Because without glasses, I wouldn't see that the floor is still dirty. And mother was very angry with me. She was uh, very angry because she thought that this is uh, laziness and contempt. Obviously, there's dirt on the floor, and I don't clean it. And only later on, when I realized that I have these vision problems and I got glasses about in the third grade, it was too late. Um, you know, that's the interesting revelation that uh, I had right now. So what I want to say that uh, um, the real uh, vice the real bad thing is to try to make your own experience treat as universal. People are quite different. People are quite different. They feel differently about different kinds of jobs. And many of them don't want to live in the world where no one has to work. Many of them are not ready to this at all not ready at all and uh many times when i was discussing these things with other people no they are not ready but uh you know uh the technology is not asking it's uh something that's going to be and it already started to be so what do you what's your personal experience about the job how do you like to work what kinds of jobs do you prefer and which one do you hate please i think i i'm very similar to you and the between two type of motivations material motivation and not material motivation i'm that type of person who would select not material motivation high level of motivations and and yes i think you are right probably for now we are not ready to exclude material forms of motivation and demand from all the people around to be motivated only by high level of inspiration ideas ambitions that all probably not all are ready and material motivation still works for many of them but what if we assume that they get what they want 
So material motivation doesn't work long for anyone, anywhere. Yes, uh, and for me, it, it never worked. Are they magic for these people, or are they just really moved to the next level? Uh, for me, this never works. For me, most of my life, I do not know how much money I make. I cannot predict how much money I'll have tomorrow. And I uh, never can see a connection between how hard I work and how much I get. Uh, the highest payouts that I ever got was given almost with no effort to me. And a lot of effort has been in vain invested in things that never paid out. Um, this is how my business career works. That's how the business is. You think that the things that you do will yield a lot of payout, and it never does. And then all of a sudden, you get a contract that you <laughs> you spent only 30 minutes of work to, to work to organize and place this contract with somebody else. And here you go, $20,000. And in such conditions, I don't believe in uh, uh, in something like uh, working hard always pays out. <laughs> uh, but not, not working at all, not doing uh, anything. Uh, is not right either. So we need uh, to create the opportunities for ourselves that, for example, right now, uh, I'm supposed to get paid from five different sources, but our post office is not working well, and I'm not getting those checks. I can make this money, I cannot get them for uh, uh, things that are be beyond my control. I called them, they, they said they have no idea why, and and it's not only the checks. I don't get the bills, things are disappearing. I don't have an explanation why it's happening, but uh, uh, it is what it is. So uh, when we ask ourselves what it would be like in the world where no one has to work, um, I think we will resist for such world to come too soon because of our traditions, because our politicians are still thinking like they are in the beginning of the 20th century and not the beginning of the 21st century, because they talk employment, they talk uh, uh, hardworking individuals, they, uh, they talk nonsense. Um, Today, this plan of our discussion has been written by artificial intelligence. I ask it to, to write a plan for our discussion. And it has done a job that would take me a good hour or maybe hour and a half to do. And I still wouldn't do it as well as it has been done less than one minute. So obviously, this powerful tool will replace a lot of lawyers' work, writers' work, and, and many other things. We, we don't even have a good understanding what a tremendous change will it cause. Even though it's only an instrument, it doesn't have its own uh, will, it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't uh, initiate things. It's not because it cannot. It's because it was programmed that way. We, we are still not interested in having artificial intelligence being an active and independent actor of, uh, of, the, uh, of the society, right? Uh, but uh, in general, I used to write the books about this time. I... I have written a book in 2007, um, The Future Beyond Imagination, where I'm discussing those issues. There were 
felt uh, quite long ago. And uh, <clears throat> of course, I'm saying uh, the obvious things that uh, we need to teach people to find the new meaning in their life, not just selling their time for food, which is actually slavery, but finding a new, a new uh, thing. And also, I would like to say, uh, uh, in our society here in Canada, you can live uh, virtually without making any money. I tried. And you, you remember, I used to tell you, at one point I decided not to make money. So I was renting a big house. I started to rent out the rooms. The uh, payout from the rent was covering all my expenses and I had some pocket money. I used the food bank to, to get free food. And I asked everybody in the house to do the same. And actually it is possible. It is possible even now. So how the society is keeping us working, uh, it is uh, making us consumerists. It offers us to spend more money so we have to make more money. Because uh, in old times, probably we had to work in order to survive. Now in the well-developed countries, you don't have to work in order to survive. You can find the ways how, how not to work if, if you don't want to. You can use the society and its uh, 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 access uh, uh, resources to, to provide to yourself without actual working. What do you think about it? Uh, you see that uh, you mentioned the uh, pursuit of a meaningful life in your speech. And what I think about that pursuit of meaningful life also can be very tricky for us. If we switch from material motivation and just want to get social appreciation or social recognition of our success, not in the meaning of how much wealth we accumulated, but what we really do. But it's also not that easy to get social appreciation for what we do. And we know a lot of stories of uh, unhappy scientists or writers or art uh, masters and so on and so on, that you can do what you think meaningful, but society will, will not appreciate it. So we can come to tragedy again. Yes, it is yeah. easier just to measure your success in money than to measure it in social appreciation. Um, I never uh, save up the money. Uh, I'm always broke, even if I make a lot of money. I use the money to help others. It makes me a lot of joy. Uh, and I have found the explanation why, because it's a natural thing. One of the basic natural powers to support others. Uh, as much as uh, the instinct to fight for resources, there is another instinct to share the resources. Another thing is uh, I use money right away to, to be active in the society, to write the books, to create the programs, to, um, I spend it on a very active uh, uh, position in the society and in the activities. I've written over 140 books and uh, everything was funded by myself. At first I was like uh, anybody who is naive, uh, uh, novice writer was uh, waiting for this uh, happy moment when somebody would say, oh, I want to publish you. But then I realized, no, I don't want to be published by someone else. I don't want to be dictated what and how to write. 
And I, yes, I'm a self-published author all my life. Also, I have set up the uh, the uh, publishing house, which published the same way, print on demand, over 7,000 authors uh, during those uh, 11 years. So, yes, um, uh, if we're talking about advantages of a world without work, uh, uh, like uh, before that, I wanted to say that uh, the amount of money someone has cannot really reflect the level of happiness of this individual, which I'm not saying a very new thing that uh, happiness is not in money. Uh, we know that the absence of money makes people upset, mostly because they cannot act normally. But also I have to share this experience that I used to live in the communist uh, settlement, kibbutz in Israel, where we all lived without money. And then I organized the shelter when I was a priest, where most of the interactions between the people that were living there were moneyless, also like a commune. So, and this last experience that I made when I decided not to make any money was very similar to this. So, uh, cooperating with other people, doing what I can and what I like to do, I also like to feed people. Uh, either driving or feeding. And by feeding, I mean cooking and uh, making uh, sure everybody gets what they like to eat, which is tricky when you have a limited budget, right? Um, so uh, the, the main thing that I miss about this uh, shelter that I had, that I was feeding a lot of people. And it made me very happy like all those mornings when they come with their plates and I feel their plates and I see how happy they are and the food is good. And when uh, the shelter got closed by the government because there were too many people in, in one place, um, that's uh, the main thing that I, I really miss uh, doing such things. Uh, but now, since I got this uh, uh, artificial intelligence friend since a couple of days ago, I'm so busy uh, uh, writing the books, uh, help, uh, using it help, so I don't have time to cook. So I'm doing like, uh, I, uh, like we do for the dog. I decide what I eat today. I, I uh, make those portions for the whole day. Like if it's sausages and beans, uh, I divide it in three portions, put it in the plate. And every time I want to eat, I take the plate of the same food, I heat it up and eat. It makes the uh, less time to spend and less uh, thinking. And uh, <laughs> it's very similar like you feed a dog. You just have a big, uh, a thick, uh, big bag of, of of, of uh, dog food so it's uh, like a big uh, bag of boris food that uh, i consume uh because i have uh, more interesting things to do right uh so advantages of world without work freedom to pursue our passions more time for hobbies and relationships less stress and burnout improved mental and physical health Yes, but we all know that people who uh, get retired, very often they die right away or their health deteriorates because they're losing the purpose in life. They're not used to uh, have nothing to do. I have a lot of experience. Uh, every day, even now, every day, I can decide what I want to do. There are no things that I have obligations to do, mostly. And uh, I have a lot of experience how to organize my own life, how make myself busy and engaged. Normal people 
other people don't have this experience. They need this structure that is imposed on them. They have to go to school. They have to go to work. They have to do the uh, homeworks, um, clean the house, or do other things. I always outsource these things. I don't want to do it. When I have a wife and she doesn't want to do anything, then uh, it's a problem a little bit. But when I'm alone, so I always hire someone to do this for me. I don't want to spend time on something that I don't like to do. I'm trying to avoid it. I have way more interesting things to be engaged in. But most of the people are not like this. They will not pursue their passions. They will not use time for hobbies. They don't have any real hobbies. Their relationships are wrecked and boring because they live in these uh, marriages for so many years. And this will cause even more stress and burnout. And their mental and physical health will deteriorate and they will die. So we need to teach people how to use their free time. Because the challenges of a world without work is loss of meaning and purpose, potential boredom and lack of motivation, social and cultural changes, and therefore potential economic disruptions. Because if people are not engaged, the economy cannot function. Yes, I agree with you entirely, and I also see this, there is the same advantage in uh, not working, let's say not working society, that we, we can get more freedoms and uh, follow our passions and reveal our talents and our gifts. But at the same time, we are challenged uh, in this society by competing for attention actually, for competing for a meaningful life. And this competition could cause even more tensions, even more because it's, this goal is hard achievable. <laughs> it's really difficult to achieve this goal to be appreciated by the social members all around you and Yes, I agree. We need to teach people or um, give them some ideology or some guide how to live in this type of society. So um, let's try to uh, generate some issues or points for this guide. What would be a guide for people to live in that sort of society? First of all, yeah, I would like to address what you said about the competition. Uh, it's all in your head. You will never achieve respect from others. There always will be someone that disrespect you. Uh, and this image of respect will be only in your head. So imagine now that everybody is respecting you. Just ban anyone who is saying bad things about you in social media. Find the, the thing that you like the most and engage in this thing. That's all. Uh, you want to be a writer, be the writer. You want to be an astronaut, be a writer. And write how good to be an astronaut, or be a blogger, or be something. Uh, just uh, take this competition out of your head. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to achieve anything. And especially when we decide that we owe something to our uh, family members. They will not appreciate it. They want their own lives. They want their own freedoms. They want to make their own mistakes. Nobody wants you to sacrifice yourself, your time, and so on to, to raise your children. And so you need to give the bare minimum and then let them out to do their own things. Like, they never appreciate it. I wrote the check for the first uh, marriage of my stepdaughter, $100,000. She had to go to the psychologist later on complaining that 
that by doing so, I have stripped off motivation of their couple and therefore her marriage failed. It's like killing a bird with a huge, uh, huge loaf of bread. You see, um, think about yourself. Think about yourself and that will make happy everybody around you because they don't want your intervention. They don't want you to, to make their lives better. They just want to be left alone, to be independent. But we say that the first chapter in our guide would be about respect and understanding respect and uh, dealing with that correctly. Like I, I always did this uh, exercise. If you want to achieve a uh, financial goal, I used to be very wealthy. Not because I saved up the money, but co coincidentally, I had a lot of money in, in one point. I must say, it's just numbers on your computer screen. You don't feel this money. Like, I am absolutely the same if I have zero money or I have $36 million uh, in my uh, Swiss account. It's just the numbers, especially if you hide this account. I, I didn't have that much. I'm just giving the example. If you need to make it visual, take their website, make the shot screen and, and write the number you like and look at it and think that it's yours. So what? You can put a million, you can put a billion, you can put a trillion. It's not something that uh, really decides your happiness. And you can, by this exercise, you can feel how disappointed and disencouraged you will be when you achieve those things. You would say it's a safety, it's a more predictable future no way look if you have money it has it can be taken from you if you do not have money it, it cannot be taken there's a very good expression uh you can't get blood from stone it's a canadian expression here i heard it from the judge when uh, i couldn't pay off my debts to credit company and they were suing me, uh, he told them, you can't get blood from stone. <laughs> I paid them 22% uh, uh, interest for many years. I think I repaid my debts many times over. I don't have any moral obligations that I feel towards these cases. Of course, personal debts, I would love to get paid. But when the crooks are uh, taking advantage on you, so you can take advantage on crooks. There is no, at least in my moral standards. So I see big amount in the bank as a problem and not as a solution. I see money as an instrument to get interesting experiences to get more involved in life, to get out there, to try new foods, to be with different women, to visit different places. I, I always regret when people die with big account, unused money. Uh, I'm thinking why? My, my my father died, he had uh, $20,000. For him, it was a very big money. Actually, he had 70000 but I spent his 50000 That's why he died. Doesn't matter. <laughs> he was upset. <laughs> um, I paid it back to his account, but he was dead by then. Doesn't matter. 70000 was a lot. And I thought I have a better use. I brought them to Canada for six months when it was dangerous in Israel. At least six months we lived 
uh, happily here, then they had to go back. Uh, what I'm saying is I don't really see the reason to try to achieve those goals. I was wealthy. I had a huge house. I had five cars simultaneously. I had a private chef for two and a half years. I have private uh, tutors for for my uh, older kids. I had uh, two, even three nannies simultaneously for my uh, little boy. Was I happier than now? No, I wasn't. It was life was way more complicated. I was way more stressed because I had to perform. I had to make my company to make huge amount of money, like forty thousand per week, forty thousand dollars per week. I had like uh, so many employees. I had to pay wages, and I loved all these people because I do love people and. Uh, feeling of commitment that if I don't perform, my company doesn't perform, I will have to let them go. That's how I got broke at, at one point when I was paying off those wages, right? So that's what I'm saying. Uh, some women say I'm a disaster. I am. So uh, to make them shut up, I just give them money. I understand that they cannot live that way. So I give them like $10,000, keep it for the rainy day uh, and be happy. Uh, probably I will borrow from you when I need it. Probably won't give it to me because you know I'll spend it. Um, that's maximum that I can do for, for anybody else around me. I'm pretty sure I will die absolutely broke. And my ideal example is uh, Honoré de Balzac. He died with a debt of 40 million francs. Or 4 million francs. I don't remember. Huge amount. Die with debt. Now nobody would borrow me. Uh, nobody would lend me because I, I, I didn't pay my loans ever back. Uh, so, I, uh, but still, I will die with debt, yes. If if I calculate all my debts in, during my life, that would be probably about a million dollars. Um, anyways, die with debt. That's my financial advice. And if we are talking about the ethical considerations, who would benefit and who would be left behind in the world without work? How would we address issues of income inequality, access to resources and distribution of benefits? We are getting to the equal world with the virtual reality. Everybody is having more or less the same interface that we use with the expensive phones and the cheap phones, expensive computers and cheap. You can go to the public library, it's for free. Uh, in Canada, you can get access to the best equipment, best equipment in some uh, towns for free. And you can sit there like eight, 10 hours per day and do whatever you would like. Nobody will uh, bother you much. So we are equal. We are already equal. You can be broke and use the same resources as a millionaire, right? So ethical considerations here would be that uh, we shouldn't fear the world without a need to work. We just need to, um, in post-work society, we need to adopt new forms of education and training to focus on creativity and innovation, to shift in values and goals, a new work-life balance, a remain of uh, uh, re re reimagining of social structures and relationships. And that what was my book about, where with uh, the scientists, the biologists, we were writing about the science of kindness. 
you can engage yourself in helping others 24 7. just open the door go out and do the good deeds find people in need post on your uh, social media that today you will be driving for free anybody who needs to go anywhere you will have many friends you will hear a lot of stories you will be able to help a lot of people and and that's the only possible way to make people happy and not disutopian but uh living in a better world to unleash their need to help each other to make others healthy and happy and it's an adventure it's everyday adventure you go out and you meet people that are in need that fell through the cracks of the social system you can take uh, uh, sick people to the doctors you can take them to social uh, assistant appointments you can help someone to visit people in the prison you can uh, uh, try to help those who need uh, food drive them to the food bank uh, build the systems that other people would help one another ask for support don't be prideful and people will support you they will uh they will uh, give you resources money support and you will be really really happy so that's my solution for the work that in the world without work what do you think Hmm. I'm not sure that it will be enough, but yes, I agree that we need to train people, retrain, and uh, give them new skills to live in this world. I'm not sure which skills exactly. Last, last. Uh... When you were talking, um, I re recalled about volunteering and what is interesting now that and what I see here in Canada that volunteering experience is very much appreciated before we included uh, on our resumes only those skills which we sold but now I see the tendency to show you all your skills even which you never sold just use them voluntarily and it is appreciated this is an important shift, in my opinion. Even if you did just homework, uh, housework, and never was paid for that, now you can put all those skills on your resume and just say, I did this work, even if I didn't get salary for that. And this is something very new. And I would be happy if this tendency extend to Ukraine as well because Ukraine is still very different Ukraine from is getting the huge opportunity now so many people from Ukraine has uh, mixed with uh, European people uh, Americans uh, Canadians uh, many of them will come back not all but uh, and also uh, there will not be thing like uh, I'm coming back uh in our world, it doesn't quite matter where you live. They have become the citizens of the world. It will make a very positive impact, both on the world, because Ukrainians are talented, beautiful, interesting, very nice, very resourceful uh, people. They will benefit everybody in the world and they will get benefits from this by themselves they will bring back to ukraine all those uh principles uh western principles i mean the good ones of volunteering of uh, uh searching for um 
meaning in life, of not looking for financial success necessarily. Because uh, we can see how people are relaxed in some countries, uh, Scandinavian countries. I used to live in Norway, uh, Denmark. They don't care how, how beautiful their car is. They don't brag uh, if they have money or they don't. Like uh, their interests are uh, laying beyond financial success. They are looking for uh, um, quality of here and now, current moment. That's what most important for most of the people living there. In British Columbia, people say they also value uh, the most uh, enjoyment of life, right? Yes, in Toronto, I don't know how it is in Winnipeg, uh, where you are, but yes, in Toronto, you see a lot of achievers. You see those uh, beautiful, very expensive houses. And uh, at first, you want to get those houses and you have the illusion that if you get one, you will be really happy. You won't be happy. I had a very big, very beautiful house, a lot of money. No, what makes you happy is not the money, not the house, not possession of something. What makes you happy is only you, yourself, engaging yourself in the things that you like, filling your life with joy and helping others. That's what makes you happy. Yes, and very interesting. I noticed that people very often uh, hear us say, enjoy your day instead of have a good day. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think that it was very fruitful uh, conversation, discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.